pensiero sulla lidorate. Greetings, everyone. I'm really pleased today to have the opportunity to talk with Mark Persing, who grew up in Lewisburg and then uh, pursued studies at the Hart School of Music and Westminster Choir College. And um, he, Mark began singing with the Met Opera Chorus back in 2002. And he's been with the chorus ever since. Welcome, Mark. Mark's a tenor, and uh, we're really pleased that you can be with us today. Oh, thank you so much, Dr. Payne. It's a pleasure to be with you. Yeah, this, this is uh, really special to be here with you today, yes. Thank you. Tell us, while we're on the uh, beginning of this interview, I, want, I would like the members of the Corral and our supporters and our friends to know the connection that you have with us here in Lewisburg uh, before you, of course, moved to New York. Sure, sure. So Lewisburg's my hometown, of course. Um, I wouldn't, well, I wasn't born there, but I, <laughs> <laughs> we moved there. Uh, my dad was in the Air Force for a little stint. Um, so we came back to Lewisburg, yeah, when I was about five. So I certainly, uh, all my schooling, you know, all, all through high school, uh, you know, I went. So yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, my mom, of course, is still there and, and a lot of other extended family and and of course, everybody knows my wife, uh, Margaret, formerly Margaret McClure, uh, is my wife. Uh, so of course, her parents, uh, Jim and Betty Lou McClure, were uh, corral in the corral for goodness. I want to say close to forty years, maybe. I mean, yeah, they just I think were so. uh, that, and I got to see many concerts uh, in my younger years, and just always enjoyed coming and um, and obviously see seeing you conduct and. Um, so yeah, I, I, this is definitely, yeah, very special, uh, just, just to be with you all. And, um, you know, as I think about, yeah, Lewisburg just, um, definitely was, um, that breeding ground for me musically. Um, I would say my earliest memories or the, the, the time I started singing was around 10 years old, uh, when, uh, uh, Pastor Charlie Glandorf, uh, who was at the Lutheran Church at that time, uh, but also obviously a great musician and was, you know, also their music minister and pastor, um, started the Lewisburg Men and Boys Choir. And so that was really when I, you know, just was at kind of perfect timing. I was, yeah, like I said, about 10 before my voice changed. And, <laughs> and so it was just some wonderful memories of, uh, of you know, starting to sing and and he just he had that amazing ability of of, of how to <laughs> you know how to keep a group of what 20 some boys focused and 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 teaching them how to use their head voice you know and and so that's that's kind of how it all started for me yeah um uh it, with you know as a treble soprano and 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 just really doing some amazing music everything from like the foray requiem and uh, or a piece like uh, the Miserere, you know, by Allegri or something, you know, we're just, mm -hmm. just, just some wonderful music. Uh, and then a couple summers, we, uh, because we, we all trained in the World School of Church Music, uh, so we got to go to uh, Princeton each summer and join a lot of other boy choirs from around the country. I think probably a lot of people would be interested to know, um, since you've been with the Met Chorus for 18 years, obviously you've seen many opera stars uh, come through. <laughs> and uh, which ones did you enjoy the most? Hearing Placido over the years was wonderful as far as just, uh, I probably heard him towards, towards the end of his career singing tenor roles. And, and it's been amazing to see him sort of switch gears and now he's you know learned these baritone roles so that that was interesting to hear his voice sort of change in that direction but but there's certainly been um these sort of up and new coming tenors that i've really enjoyed hearing over the last 10 years or so um uh, piotr bachala is a polish tenor who probably is one of my favorites he's 
He's been at the Met a while now. Uh, just, just love uh, his voice. He was part of the gala. Um, just a wonderful tenor. Uh, Jonas Kaufmann, uh, German tenor, obviously a very popular tenor at the Met. Um, a little more dramatic voice who I've enjoyed a lot. Um, and then you have more of the more of the bel Can on the bel canto side. Probably my favorite is Javier Camarena, who came, you know, made a big splash. I think it was uh, uh, in uh, Cenerentola, uh, mm. uh, Rossini's Cenerentola, probably about maybe eight years ago now. And just these, I think there's even a, <laughs> well, definitely some high C's. If not, I think he even maybe went over to a D at one point. You know, wow. we're talking, you know. Amazing. Yes, the, I don't think I've, that was probably, yeah, that audience just went berserk. And so that, to be on stage and to, you know, <laughs> just to hear that ovation for, you know, the next five minutes or whatever it was. <laughs> so uh, you're always so happy to, yeah, when you hear somebody make a, debu a debut like that and just, so, you know, those are a few names. And of course, you know, on the, the women's side, you know, you have Anna Netrepko and, uh, Sonia Yancheva, of course, Renee, Renee Fleming, you know, an American soprano who we all know, you know, she's been wonderful. I, again, she's sort of, um, sort of semi-retired from opera, but, but, uh, but I, I definitely heard her sing some wonderful, wonderful roles from like Des, Desdemona from Otello, you know, at, and um, of course, um, uh, the Marshallin and Rosen Cavalier, that was sort of one of, one of her signature roles and, um, Tatiana and, and, Oye and Onyegin, you know, so she's just a wonderful artist, of course, that, you know, uh, as a, an American singer, I've just loved it, you know, her whole career is just, yeah. Um, just, Absolutely. Yeah, you've, so. you've probably, I, I know you have, had the opportunity to sing some solos on the Met stage yourself. Um, and you've also yeah. done some musical theater. Uh, tell us a little bit about, about some of that work that you've done. Sure. Well, it, uh, being in the chorus, you um, you do get little opportunities uh, to sing. I've enjoyed, um, you know, in Daughter of the Regiment. Um, again, talking about somebody like Javier Camarena. Everybody knows that's that's sort of like uh, uh, Mes the the famous uh, tenor aria, which has like I believe nine high C's. <laughs> you know, and the, this, this past we we did. Uh, daughter of the regiment just a few seasons ago and Javier of course was wonderful and you know just mm. getting those C's with with ease but there is a little moment uh this sort of peasant role uh in the first act just a fun little moment um for me where the or the orchestra stop the orchestra stops and and you you I'm basically saying something to the effect like oh the, the French army has has left the mountains <laughs> you know it's uh, uh <laughs> And, you know, so it was, it, you have those nice moments um, That's like sweet. that. And, 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 and so that, that was, that was, a, that was a treat to, uh, to sing something like that. And, and then there's other, you know, um, there's been other operas uh, like Ma, in Manol where maybe you're in a, gr a group of people and you're just sort of interjecting <laughs> um, a, a couple of bars or something, but. My question to you would be, um, what made you decide to audition to be in the Met Opera Chorus, how did that all, I think if I remember right, you had originally thought you'd go into medicine uh, or medical yeah. practice of some kind, um, but then you switched gears and you went to the Hart School and I'm obviously Westminster Choir College. And so how did the whole idea of singing in the Met Chorus come into your mind and when, sure, when sure. did that all happen? Yeah, right, so like you said, I. I was pre-med once upon a time many years ago. Uh, I, I did start at um, Dickinson College because it was a liberal arts school. I, I, I really was taking uh, my first formal voice lessons because even though, like I, like I said, I, I had sung as a, a boy soprano, I, I had sung with Dr. Jordan in high school. I, it wasn't really until I got to Dickinson where I was really, you know, one-on-one -on -one with a voice teacher. Her name was Brenda Smith, who was a Westminster graduate. She's a mm -hmm. wonderful uh, uh, mm -hmm. vocal, you know, vocal pedagogue and, and, and a, a wonderful performer. And so I look back, uh, you know, she was just certainly one of those key teachers that just really kind of nurtured me and, and really where I really 
uh, for the first time uh, understood the, the technical side of the voice, right? And just right. was starting to learn arias, learning to sing, uh, you know, art songs and, um, and just, just, just completely, it was this whole new world that was open to me and I just, I just loved it and was eating it up. And it, so it just became clear, yeah, uh, by my sophomore year at Dickinson, I was like, I remember making the call to my folks, like in, I, was, I was in tears because I was just, I kind of felt like, oh, I'm, I'm letting, you know, I kind of felt like I was letting them down or something. But, but you know, I, I give them so much credit because they just, they just were like, you know what, Mark, it's okay. You know, um, even though it was like this kind of foreign world to them, you know, because because my dad, he always knew he wanted to be a doctor, you know, but, mm. but, but they, they also, saw that how much I had enjoyed music for for so many years so so they were really the ones that said you know what Mark you know if this is really your passion you know should we should we look at a music school <laughs> so I was pretty flabbergasted I was just like oh okay well that would be great so <laughs> I remember uh getting in touch with Dr. Jordan and um and at that time he he was now you know he was at the heart school and and you know he was able to, to set up an audition there I got accepted and then, then um, yeah, and then everything really just kind of fell into place from there. You know, then I was in a, a, a you know, a conservatory atmosphere and just, just, just again, just um, loved hearing singing, you know, all over the place in the halls there and just, just, just continued to grow um, and had opportunities, you know, at heart you could, I, I was actually, I, at least at that time, you could you could major in opera as an undergrad. So I, um, but you you for for undergrads you would mostly do compra Mario roles uh, in operas, you know, because I was very young still. So, but I got to sing roles like Gastone and Traviata or roles like that, you know, and it was it was just great. I mean, we'd sing them in English because, uh, you know, it was still a lot of music to learn, but. But yes. we would also do, we would do scene work in the original languages. So it was great to just, again, learn, uh, learn French and Italian and German and, 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 and you know, learn scenes. But, uh, but I also could do lead roles in, in music theater at heart. So it was just a nice, um, you know, it, it really afforded me a lot of uh, performing opportunities. Uh, so, so I really, really grew, um, you know, artistically there and, 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 and as a performer. So I, I, I treasure that time at heart. Mark, I wonder, you know, we've been talking about the artists that um, come across the stage at the Met and your training and everything. And I wonder, I, would you be willing to sing something for us? Um, yeah, that, sure. Yeah, I, that would be wonderful. We would, <laughs> we would love it. <laughs> okay, well, I, I was thinking last night, uh, and my wife, I'll give her the credit, she thought of uh, You'll Never Walk Alone, because it's, obviously we all know it, it's just one of those songs that, uh, you know, it's a song of hope, you know, it's from Carousel, of course, but we all, we all, you know, the message is just, well, I'll just sing it, but we, we you know, it kind of speaks for itself, right? When you walk through a storm, keep your chin up high and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the storm is a golden sky and the sweet silver song of a lark. Walk on through the wind, walk on through the rain, though your dreams be tossed and blown. Walk on, walk on, we hope in your heart and you'll never walk alone you'll never walk alone 
Oh, <laughs> I'm speechless. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Bravo. I, we have wanted you to come and sing with us. I've wanted you to come and do some solos in some of the works that we've sung in the past, as you know, and, um, but you have a grueling schedule there at the Met, and I know you have to be in rehearsals and then do the performances, and a lot of times your major performances are the same time we do ours, so it's, I, of course, now would be a perfect time to have you come and sing, but we can't do it, unfortunately, but what a beautiful oh. instrument, and thank you for, for singing for us, Mark. Oh, it was my pleasure. And for, and for sharing, you know, a part of you with us. Um, you are, you grew up here, and it's so fun to hear where, where you've gone. And so thank you, Mark. Say hello to your family, to your wife, Margaret, and I um, will hope to see you again soon. Okay, Take definitely. care. All right, bye. Bye-bye. In front of the party, virtue. In front of the party. Virtue.